Good morning, and I do mean morning. It's 3 a.m. We are in Japan, we're in Tokyo. I'm currently sat in the car park of the Conrad Hotel. The reason being, I have this incredible backdrop of supercars behind me. We've got AMG GT here, 300 SL there, a brace of Aventadors over my shoulder. And the reason for the video today is to sign off and summarize on the Gumball 3000's 20th anniversary rally, which I've just come off the back of. And I thought, you know what, rather than me uh, explaining how it's been so far, I always find that I provide the best value when I can answer your questions directly. So as we always do, I've gone onto Instagram. I've given you guys the opportunity to ask as many questions as you like. I obviously can't get back to them all here, but I'm gonna do my best to work my way through them on Instagram to get back to as many as I can. So if your question hasn't been answered on here, Go to Instagram and uh, yeah, hopefully I'll get back to your question on there. This is from Tim underscore Harty, H-A-R-T-E. Wow, that's, that's quite a big question. Um, so in short, what's the, what do I think is the best piece of content that I've made on this rally to help encapsulate and sort of immerse you in the experience? The best piece of content I've, I think I've made this year to immerse you in the full experience of Gumball it was almost without exception the day that we flew our cars from Bologna in Italy all the way to Osaka in Japan. The reason being there were so many facets to that piece of content. Um, if you haven't seen the video, it's titled uh, saying goodbye to my Porsche GT3. I was literally saying goodbye to it because my car was left in Italy while I flew to Japan and when I got to Japan uh, I collected an Aston Martin DB11. That to one side, the reason I think it's the best piece of content is we started off in the Pagani factory and we got access to an exclusive tour behind the scenes in the actual production line itself. Then we drove from the factory to the airport where we had an incredible and very swift paced drive from Pagani to the airport chasing a Ferrari 288 GTO and coincidentally that 300 SL over my shoulder there. Uh, that was incredible because both of those cars are, I mean, I think the 288 GTO these days is, you know, 2.8 million pounds, over $3 million. So to see a car that's so iconic and so special being used properly was awesome. Then we get to Bologna Airport. Gumball had taken over an entire terminal and it became this sort of rave slash check-in slash food hall. That was incredible. And then the actual plane journey itself. Now when we get onto the plane, this otherwise standard commercial airline became a rave in the sky and it was incredible uh, also some friends of ours got married during the flight and then we landed in japan so in terms of the full immersion of the crazy stuff and the, the really inaccessible stuff that happens on gumball that for me was the full immersion in what happened there so check that out and check out the video after that as well because it kind of combines them both together okay next question car spotter jerome how do the cars come back from Tokyo? Does Gumball 3000 arrange this or do you have to do it yourself? Okay, so Gumball arranges the cars to be transported here, but they don't arrange for them to come back. The reason being is that when they come here, everyone comes to one space, we all go together, they can all go on the same plane, it's much more efficient, cost-effective, they're all going to the same location. So that's included in the price. The price we will get onto shortly, stay with me, we're getting to that. Um, but on the way back, everyone has to arrange their own logistics to return their cars. The reason being it's the exact opposite of the way here. Everything is fragmented. These cars are going to different countries around the world. Some people are leaving them here to stay on for a bit longer and enjoy their own tour of Japan. So yes, in short, everyone arranges their own logistics and transport of their cars back home. Rollin CHLT, what is the craziest profession that one of the other gumballers has shared? Oh man, there's so many. This is actually one of the things that makes Gumball the most unique, is the people which are on this rally. If you read down the bios and profiles of the people on this rally, you would not believe it. What's great about Gumball is it, it's this melting pot of people from all walks of life, but the majority of them tend to be at the, the top of their game. On the rally, we've got music stars like Usher, we've got celebrities like David Hasselhoff, and then on the flip side, you've got people from the business world. 
Um, for me, the most interesting person has been one of the founders of Bitcoin. Those guys were fantastic. I say guys because he brought along his wife uh, and they were just lovely people, very interesting, very insightful. And of course, you know, coins, Bitcoin right now, cryptocurrency, massive movement. Uh, yeah, it's just fascinating and inspiring to be around people like that. So for me, they're the most interesting. But you've got hip hop artists, you've got DJs, you've got painters, you've got artists, actors, you know, Adrian Brody was on the rally. The list goes on. I guess it's almost a personal subjective opinion to who you find the most interesting. But for me, it was the crypto clan. Okay, Joel Ware or W-E-R-E, were, where? Anyway, Joel, can you please explain the process of getting into the rally? If you have to apply, how much it costs, what are the rules in terms of getting accepted, etc. Okay, so uh, it's, not, it's not as straightforward as just phoning up and saying, hey, I wanna do the rally. The idea is, so appropriately, this is the Gumball's 20th anniversary. They've been going long enough now that they have a very large database of people. I think it's over 5,000 people who have attended the rally over the last 20 years. So that's a very significant database for a grid of only 120 cars. Now keep that 120 in mind. A proportion of that is uh, made up of media and support crew. So it's not always the full 120. Sometimes it's a bit over, sometimes it, it's a, a bit under. But what Gumball like to do is invite 50% of alumni, so 50% people who have already done the rally in previous years, and another 50% of brand new people. Uh, the reason for that is it's injecting fresh life and fresh blood into the brand, but also the experience for the other entrants doing it. And, you know, it is awesome coming back and seeing all the same faces, but this year, and this is my seventh year, it's really, really interesting coming back, because I actually skipped 2017, 2016 was my last one. Coming back and seeing so many new people. And while I've seen lots of regular faces and old friends and people I've known, it's been thoroughly enjoyable getting to know new people. The crypto guys, case in point, and also a shout out to a guy called Jordan Melville, the dude with the Averde Hikers Green 812 Superfast. That guy has brightened up my day every single day. You just meet people who are so full of life, inspirational, and yeah, just want to make the most of any situation. When you apply, uh, there's almost a process of, I guess, uh, qualifying you, really. Uh, a lot of people think it's about the car, which it absolutely isn't. Obviously, from the outside, you see all of these incredibly expensive supercars, and that is a vast proportion of these cars. But, you know, in the past, they've had people doing it in ambulances, pickup trucks, a London taxi, old cars, classic cars, new cars. It doesn't have to be super fancy. It's a lot more about embracing the ethos of gumball and that's making like enjoying the peaks and making the most of the troughs uh, because this is an incredibly wild ride i think people look at it from the outside and it just looks like you're breezing along in your five-star hotels and your supercars um, i did did a live stream yesterday and i think the majority of the comments were james go to bed you look shattered <laughs> and you're absolutely right I was, but that's a huge culmination of adrenaline, excitement, tiredness, endurance, trials, tribulations, things go wrong a lot, and yeah, it, you don't so much finish Gumball as it sort of spits you out the other side, and it's not till it's finished that you wonder what on earth has just happened to me. So the idea is to create this melting pot of incredible personalities all in one space to just have the most eclectic time you can possibly think of. The cost. The cost changes year on year. Uh, this year was particularly expensive because it involved three airplanes, two for the cars, one for the passengers, and of course we, we flew all the way from Europe to Japan, so big flights. Uh, this year, the expense to enter the rally was £60,000, so around about $80,000, and that's between two people sharing one car. So if you halve it, it's still a lot of money. Um, and a lot of people uh, ask, you know, what's, what are you getting for that? Um, you're actually uh, sort of buying into this incredible club. I was just talking about the interesting people. Networking is a huge part of it, but also it's the 
the inaccessible things that you can't buy. You know, Gumball works with the governments of every country that they land in. You know, you can't ha have an event this big and shut down the center of a city and have hundreds of thousands of people come around and cheer for you. And that's what you're getting. You almost get this sort of rock star style experience through every checkpoint and every town and certainly every major city that you start and end in. Uh, it's an incredible festival and everyone at that point is very much behind you and Gumball and that experience is magnificent. Yeah, it's experiences like that. It's experiences like, you know, chartering an entire Boeing 747 just for your friends. These are the things which unfold and these are the stories that uh, develop as a result of um, you know putting yourself into these very unique situations which are highly unlikely to be replicated anytime soon and at the same time you're doing it with you know the most interesting people I think I've ever met and that happens year on year so it is expensive it's not always as expensive as it has been this year but every year I look back and I think it's it's worth it it's absolutely outstanding Joey Lewis when will you bring out your own pair of glasses? Um, actually, I guess that's a question for you guys. Comments below. Uh, I get a lot of comments on the sunglasses I wear, particularly the silver ones with the side shrouding. Would you like to see a Mr. JWW pair or range of sunglasses available? Maybe they could be as eccentric and crazy as the ones which I often wear. I'd be interested in your feedback. Comments below. What's a typical day like, hour by hour? We see all the cool stuff on the videos, but what goes on when you're not filming? For those of you who don't know and might be wondering why it's called Gumball 3000, the 3000 stands for 3000 miles. So every rally you drive 3000 miles over about seven days. And obviously, as it would suggest, there's a lot of driving involved in that. And so I guess when the camera isn't on, it's mostly because we are crunching miles and we're probably talking amongst ourselves and driving for a long time in a straight line. Granted, there'll be other supercars around us and we'll be in a fantastic convoy, but we typically try and share those very best bits with you guys. Uh, because on camera, once you've got over the fact that, okay, you're in this convoy, it's way more fun for the person who's actually in it and doing it than it is for us just showing you the same line of cars going, going, going. Um, so most of the time it's driving and you know, other times uh, we might just be stopping and filling our faces with service station food. If the conversation at that point is good, we'll share that. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, really we, we do, well I certainly do it anyway, try and uh, sort of cherry pick the best bits. And uh, sometimes things will happen that my camera just isn't rolling and I never get to share it and that's a shame. But generally, um, yeah, we try and share our highlights. How would you describe the atmosphere on the rally? Sorry, this is from Linus Salamonsen. How would you describe the atmosphere on the rally? I have heard a lot about douchey people being selfish and only thinking about money, etc. I want to hear from your point of view. Okay, so I will address first and foremost that, uh, you know, there are millionaires and billionaires. We have multiple billionaires on this event. Um, and there's also, in fact, every single entrant on here uh, is a millionaire. So just by the nature of the world and humans, there are times when there's egos and there's times when there's people think they're better than other people. But that is a minority. It really, really is. As I mentioned earlier, this is my seventh rally. Um, quite simply, if I don't enjoy something, I never come back. And this is my seventh year. I keep coming back. There's something about it. Um, and the number one thing and, the, and what I get the most out of it without exception is the people and I think that says it all. Yes, there are douches, mostly when, you know, people are tired, they've had a long day, things haven't gone their way, they walk in the hotel door, all they want is some food and sleep and they can get a bit, you know, angry. But by and large, the whole purpose of people doing this is to have a good time and people's mindsets are we're here to have a good time, embrace the culture of every country we're in, embrace the cars, the driving, everyone's a like-minded petrol head. And of course, a big part of Gumballs is the partying as well. So generally it's fine. Uh, with regards to the money thing, you know, this year Gumball raised half a million pounds for charity in eight days. 
Uh, they have auctions during the evening where they auction off some incredible things and they've partnered up with the uh, Tony Hawk Foundation to build skate parks in areas where there are underprivileged children. And you, you know, you can find out more about this on Gumball's website, but when you watch the video on that, it's truly touching, it brings a tear to the eye. And all of these people who are taking part in this contribute entirely to that. So without them, this wouldn't happen. So this is a force for good. You know, it brings smiles on people's faces when uh, Gumball rolls it into town and Gumball as a byproduct of that are also making good and making real changes in communities across the world. So it really isn't all, all bad. It's certainly not all egos, but generally it's amazing. Choosing just one car and one itinerary, what would be your ultimate future Gumball 3000 trip and why? That's from Johnny Cab 75 <laughs> Okay. I'm going to change that slightly and, and, and just latch on to what would the, the ultimate gumball trip be. I would like a hyperball where, where it's hypercars only. Imagine that. And we could go for hyperball, you know, hypercars from back in the day. You could throw in like, you know, F40s and things like that. You might not class that as a hypercar, but it's certainly like hyperballer, right? So yeah, just imagine a super special only event where we've got 120 cars here. Imagine if they were all hypercars. <laughs> that would be incredible. Just rows of LaFerraris, 918s, P1s, classic stuff. People would turn up in some crazy Porsche GT1 or something like that. Uh, P1 LMs, things like that. That would be pretty special. Uh, maybe they should do like a weekend spin-off event where they do like a Gumball 300 and it's a weekend rally of just hypercars or something. But yeah, something like that would be pretty abstract. This is a very, <laughs> this is a paragraph question again but in short excluding the entrance fee how much did gumball cost you um on top of the entrance fee the variables are quite large depending on how you want to live your lifestyle during the rally so let me just tell you what is included so the entry fee is hotels food there is the logistics involved in this one which is obviously taken care of and that's a huge one uh, but things which aren't included are your fuel, uh, toll bills, things like that. Uh, at the parties in the evening, if you want to buy a table, that's not included and they get really expensive. Uh, if you want to eat outside of the hotel, the food is included if you eat in the, the sort of um, allocated venues for gumball. They aren't actually always in hotels. They can be at all sorts of uh, different locations. But if you d decide to get anything outside of that, then that is extra as well. Um, I know I've probably spent maybe 4,000 I would say tolls Japan tolls are everywhere going through France there's tolls everywhere yeah those sorts of things okay so I've answered a good chunk of questions there I have a feeling this video is gonna be quite long uh, as I mentioned go back to Instagram I'll try and work my way through these questions over time to try and get back to as many of you guys as possible uh, I'm not sure if you can tell but the condensation that is forming on my face as a result of the humidity here in Japan uh, is almost forcing me to call it a day before the microphone on my camera turns into like a wet cat looking thing yeah it's really it's unreal the humidity is ridiculous even at night time it's about 30 degrees so I'm gonna call it a day and that is me signing off and wrapping up Gumball 3000 20th anniversary 2018 London to Tokyo massive thank you to all of you for watching the next time you tune in we'll be back in the UK and for me personally there's even bigger news coming please subscribe the news coming soon is is big it's, it's gonna be it's, it's so exciting super super exciting as always guys thanks for watching and i shall see you next time ciao